Whoa, I almost didn't make it on time. I had the phone in my hand. Hey, everybody, welcome to Pain Happy Little Minis. I'm Rick, your host. I'm Dave, your other host. <laughs> uh, make sure you guys go check out Dave Taylor Miniatures when you get the opportunity. Uh, see all of Dave's amazing work over there. Uh, we're here at the Game Trade Media Studios in Timonium, Maryland. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. Hand gestures. Making having a good time today. I don't think Timonium has any hand gestures. Nah, I'm making all the hand gestures. Oh, it has some. It has some. You're right. But we can't show them on, all right. on Facebook Live. That's true. We got to keep it PG. Yep. So, welcome everybody. Uh, we are continuing to painting some WizKids miniatures today. Uh, you were going to work on some yellow today. Yeah. Uh, so I think um, Brad, Brad Thompson, uh, brought up on in the chat on Tuesday, he had a few questions about painting yellow, and we talked about that. Um, but uh, then yesterday, well, last night, he posted a picture of uh, the model he was working on and mm -hmm. had a few additional questions. So I said, well, we gave him some answers and said, let's have a look at it sort of on, uh, on screen today. So I'm going to be working on uh, the cloak of this dragonborn uh, and sort of going from there. All right. Yeah, so that should be uh, quite good. And I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to go ahead and share this a few times. <laughs> share this we, with the world. Because we, you know, we want to make sure everybody that has an interest in what we do can see what we're doing. So while Rick's sharing, how about everybody else out there share as well? That would be awesome. Because he just shares with his mum. That's right. Yeah. She's she, she watches, but you know she's always watching as mums will do. Yeah. Um, Hi, mum. Hi, mum. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, one of the things that uh, the Brad was looking at uh, when he was working on his um, his miniature was looking at the uh, Games Workshop uh, or the Citadel Paint app. And, oh, we gotta fix Dave's mic here for a second. Oh. I have the worst. I mean, not the worst, but it's pretty bad. So just look at that. Still, still problems. Yeah. All right. Design a new mic for my neck. But um, yeah, so he was looking at the Citadel Paint app, uh, which talked about, um, or basically gave a, a four-step um, sort of process for for painting yellow. Uh, sadly, in the, the app, there isn't enough sort of information to describe how to apply it. Okay. Um, or in what thicknesses or anything like that, how many layers you might have to do. Working with yellow, as we mentioned the other day, is still sort of incredibly tough. So um, additional layers might be necessary or mixing it with a um, sort of a thicker color um, is also a good approach. So um, yeah, so the first, first step we had was adding, putting on some um, Avalon Sunset go, which that shot, at least on our screen in here, it looks really bright orange. But it's more of a uh, muted sort of almost must, uh, musty yellow. Yeah, it does have a very mustard look to it. Yeah. Grey Poupon even. Well, I don't know if I'd go Grey Poupon. No? But it's fun to say. It is. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm going to get a little bit of that and mix it in with my... Uh, Sun Yellow from Vallejo here. Um, as long as uh, Johnny's back there after fixing my microphone. And uh, see if we can get that overhead shot. Almost, there we go. Okay, so uh, we've got some of the sort of the darker Avalon Sunset there, mixing in with the uh, Sun Yellow. Yes. Then we just start uh, layering that uh, on the highlights, oh, highlighting that up. Uh oh, yeah. Every, hey, everybody, glad to see everybody. These shots are awesome. Thanks for the yellow paint tips. Absolutely, Emily. Uh, hi, Jean. Adam. The Citadel Paint app is useful for for some stuff. <clears throat> you had mentioned the Citadel Paint app already, yep. and one of the things that the Citadel Paint app does not do is show you the technique in, of application. It yep. gives you the colors you want to use, but not the technique you need to use. Yeah. So. Yep. Um, I, I, before the show, when I was talking with Rick about it, I said that uh, I, usually for a lot of their paint jobs, there's might be 12, 13, 14 steps on a particular color. And trying to boil that down to four right. for the app is, is a tough ask, really. 
but um, it's something that Judo you've been doing for quite a while. Um, I mentioned in the post last night that uh, on the Painting Happy Little Minis mm -hmm. Facebook group, yep. uh, that we kind of, I've kind of called that uh, approach one, two, three, heavy metal. So one, heavy two, metal is the... Uh, the the sort of movie the, with uh, the Terrakian girl. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is that movie, yeah. uh, but it's also the uh, the Games Workshop uh, miniature painting team, it's the oh. heavy metal team. Oh, okay. And their paint jobs are always brilliant. <clears throat> uh, and so it's a matter of showing the first step, putting down the the first yellow, right. putting down the the second yellow, maybe putting a wash on it. And then showing a beautifully painted miniature. So there's there's a lot of steps in between three and heavy metal. Okay. That uh, that sadly get missed out. And you can't get to heavy metal by going Guitar Hero, just so you know. Okay. <laughs> what, is that not how that works? I, I don't know. I, don't know. Uh, <clears throat> I think that was that was more a music heavy metal reference. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah. Hey Gene, welcome. Uh, Sean or Josh. Uh, yellow can be a daunting color to paint, but Dave knows what's up. Uh, enjoyed watching you paint the uh, Stormtrooper yesterday, Josh. The This new product, our whisk is so nice. It's a joy to paint these. Being able, yep, they're awesome. Hey, what's up, Michael? He's got a question about shade. I was at MarsCon over the weekend, and someone said to make shade get further into the lines of a mini, I should dip my brush into a little bit of Dawn dish detergent before I dip it. Oh, dip it in the wash. Uh, dip wash. it into into the into the share or the shade. Yep. Uh, is this something, or would it be stupid to do? Uh, it's not stupid. Mm -hmm. um, basically, uh, what it does, what, what <clears throat> like Dawn dishwashing liquid or um, or anything like that, um, Future Four polish is another popular one. Um, it is designed to do is to break surface tension. Okay. So if you've got your uh, the wash, you know how sometimes when you put a wash on there, you'll get a little bit of pooling. Yes. And you'll get a like a almost like a tide mark. Yeah. Kind of thing. Uh, that's uh, what the the dawn dish soap will do. Will break that tension and help that flow further. Okay. So it's the the reason it pools is it, it's that surface tension is okay. holding it together into a a ball basically. Right. And when you hit it with that, it will just uh, loosen up. Kind of like when up. you hit it, when you have a watery grease pan and you drop it in a boom. boom. Yeah. Just like that. Just yeah. like that. You don't need much at all. You just need a tiny, tiny bit. But uh, yeah. yeah, that can work. It is not not stupid at all. Uh, okay. I did, everybody, I did shave my head and beard. I trimmed up. I, I, I had to clean up. I was looking, <laughs> I was just looking like a hobo. And we don't need that. It's yeah. great. Just left me looking like a hobo. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> he, he could have coordinated. He could have said, Dave. I'm cleaning my my, my, my grill get a, up. Get a haircut, you hippie. All right? Yeah. But, uh, oh, that's going along nicely. Look at that. What? Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah, see. I'm painting tieflings and all, but uh, you're doing a Dragonborn fighter? Dragonborn fighter, yep. Nice. Uh, so just working on the... The cloak at the moment, so uh, if you can just quickly, yep, there we go. Uh, so, the first layer was the Avalon Sunset. The second layer was a mix of the Sun Yellow and Avalon Sunset. And now I'm going to do a highlight with the uh, Sun Yellow. <laughs> a well fed hobo. <laughs> well fed, uh, totally. <laughs> totally. Truth. Fantastic chicken sandwich just beforehand, but uh, yeah, that would be the belly giving that away, right? Uh, yeah, the belly. My belly gives away the fact that I am. I'm oh, you're well, the well-fed hobo. I am the well well-fed hobo. Um, Adam's asking. I need a paint handle. How are the Citadel ones? I love this thing. Uh, I've, I've mentioned it before. It's a it, it's actually cool, and the price point is amazing at eight dollars. So, yep, it's really good. No. <laughs> yeah, it's, really, it's really nice to, to be able to put your minis in there and hold them in there. I think um, a cool thing to 
to remember as well is to not put it down onto paint. That was on my hand. Oh, okay. I had gotten something <laughs> on my hand and I just gripped it and I was like, ah, whatever. But, you know, yep. in a, eventually this is just going to be all sorts of colors around here because yep. I'm just a slob. <laughs> <laughs> a well-fed slob. Yeah, a well-fed hobo slob. Hobo slob. There we go. Yeah. So I'm just thinning down the uh, the yellow a, a bit here. It might seem sort of counterintuitive seeing how the as the yellow is quite thin already, but um, it's just to make sure that it goes on smoothly. Uh, I think Brad was painting a like a fighter or a paladin kind of character, so a lot of the armor, mm -hmm. a lot of the yellow armor. Uh, nice. Because it's thin, you're going to be doing quite a few, well, you're going to do a couple of coats anyway. Um, well, because it doesn't have a lot of pigment in it, really, you're going to be doing a couple of coats. So they may as well be thin, smooth coats. And Looks good. Yeah. So, there we go. Um, so looking fairly smooth there at the moment. Uh, the temptation is always keep working on it, mm -hmm. keep moving and uh, keep adding sort of more and more layers or more and more highlights there. But uh, with the yellow, what you don't want to have happen is as it's drying, it might be drying unevenly. Okay. You don't want to use your next brush stroke to push away some of the, the paint. Okay. So it's that one way you just gotta wait a little bit, pause. If you're working on a couple of models, move on to the next one. Okay. Um, come back to it once the, the yellow is fully dried. And you are working on a couple other models. I am. Yeah. Yep. I've got the, the, uh, the children are still... The children. I haven't quite finished the children yet. Yes. So, there we go. There's one of them. That's and right. And the other one. So, a little bit more work to do on them. Yeah, this, the, the handles seem to be... Uh, you can see uh, one of our cohorts... Uh, on Game Trade, put uh, that w the handles seem to be sold out at most locations okay. because they are so inexpensive, yep. and a lot of people like I've I've seen people come in and, and pull a whole peg, right? Okay, you know, and I yep. I bought I think six of them, okay, and uh, I have three or four that I'm using. I have one. I have another one over on the table over there. I have this one. I have the one I gave you. Yep. I gave another friend one, and then so I then I have one at home. Okay. So it's like... you got them everywhere. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> every place I, I may potentially paint. I'm going to paint. And I, 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 I want to get more because when I do get into that army painter level where I'm, yep. I'm going to do a squad of something, I want them all to be on one and I can just yep. go, you know, yeah, right sure. the line. Just pick on, yeah, sure. You don't have to take them all off. Yeah. Put them back on. And the fact that, like, this miniature I'm painting right here and this miniature, if you guys don't already know this, when you buy a WizKids mini set, you're getting two miniatures like this, two character miniatures, for four ninety nine. Wow! So you're basically cool. at the cost of one of these is would be what would cost to buy two 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 and a half yep. miniatures, three miniatures. So it's super uh, affordable for yep. what for the hobby. Definitely. So yeah. So buy a lot, have a whole row of them set up, and get to work. <laughs> The um, the next thing we're going to do here uh, on the the Citadel paint out for the the yellow it suggested um, oh there we go oh let's get it right oh there we go uh, it suggested uh, Agrax Earthshade which is quite a dark brown <coughs> okay um, wash uh, I'm going to use some of the Army Painter soft tone here which is the almost sort of, sort of their sepia kind of wash I'm thinning it down a bit here. The Agrax Earthshade, or e even if I was to use the, the Army Painter's uh, mm -hmm. Strong Tone, would be a bit dark, in my opinion, Okay. Um, for going over yellow. Because it'll start to tint, really tint the yellow and make it quite look quite dirty. Okay. So, um, I mean, here, when we brush this over, it's tinting the yellow a little bit, but um, if we're focusing on... Well, if we're making, making sure it's fairly thin, it'll sit in those recesses. All right, Adam, have a good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Stopping by. Again, if you're watching us, please share the share this with your friends and family or 
uh, your fellow gamers, if you're in a group uh, that dedicated to D and D or just RPGs and miniature gaming, you know, let you know share it with your friends there too, so they can enjoy what we're doing here and maybe learn some stuff or ask some yep. questions. Okay. So I'm gonna turn that around and show the camera there. So we see the the uh, the wash is sitting sort of sitting there, starting to pool in some of those recesses. Um, it's also sort of pooling in a, a few places up up top. So what I'm going to do is just uh, wash out my brush, and then just uh, pull some of those, uh, thin some of those down. Is um, so they're not too stark, and I don't get any of that. Um, yeah. Don't start to get that uh, sort of tide mark we were talking about before. Yeah. It looks good. Let's thin those out there. Yep. So you can see it's doing the shading that it needs to do, but it's not as um, not as stark as an aggregate earth shade or a, a strong tone might be. Uh, something else that you could use if you wanted to uh, to give you a little bit more of a sort of a reddish or orangey tinge. Okay. Uh, if you want to go down that path, is instead of using the um, the uh, Soft tone, you can use something like a flesh wash. Okay. Um, tends to have a little bit more of a sort of a rosy sort of uh, tint you, in it. Yeah. Uh, Brad says, so you thinned the soft tone before applying it to the yellow? Yep. You thinned it down? Okay. Yep. And then, uh, yes, Earthshade really made the yellow dirty and harder to clean up with other layers of yellow. Okay. Yep. The, um, one of the things with applying washes is if you're uncertain about it, mm -hmm. thin it down first because it, it's easier to apply two or three thin layers right. of wash than take off one th thicker layer. It's kind of really tough to do that. Okay. <laughs> You've got to start from, the, start from scratch. It makes sense. So I'm going to let it dry something. for a little bit. I and, learned something today. Uh, work on the, uh, <clears throat> the kids. Uh, Chris Cox says, love the Dragonborn. It's a, it is a great miniature and a great character uh, race yep. to play. That's the front side. Sure yeah, he's oh. he's a good looking man. Oh. Oh. oh, there we go. That's there. And let's run to this one. You're oh, you're overhead. Yeah. Going to this one. My bad. Still getting used to it all. Okay, there we go. So that's the. Come on. It's not liking me today. We moved there it closer, we so. Okay. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's where you go when you get a professional behind go. the camera. There we go. So yeah, it's pretty crazy, but uh, you can see that it's still quite thin and glossy there. So we'll let that dry for a bit, and uh, yeah. Nice. Move on. And what is everybody out there, what, what are you painting? Are you painting uh, something for a friend or commission? Or are you just getting back into the hobby and uh, picking up your D&D character? Because I'll tell you one of the things, I, I was talking uh, to Derek, excuse me, my eye got a little itchy, oh. but um, Derek who runs the Mead Hall events, the Adventures okay, of the Mead yep. Hall at, here in Baltimore. The Charm City Mead, Mead <clears throat> they have Works. Charm City Mead Works, they do a D&D &D night there every other Wednesday. He came up here yesterday and we just kind of pow out a little bit. And uh, one of the things that we're learning, uh, you know, is when you are playing D&D, &D, maybe for the first time and you're like, I want to paint a miniature and you want to paint your character, it really lends itself to you being more invested in that character. Oh, once yeah. you, and once you painted it, you know, you're like, I, I did that. I made this look the way I envisioned it, and yeah. now you really you want that character to live. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> you don't want your DM to ruin it and kill him in the next yeah. session. <laughs> but uh, you know, painting your miniatures for for gameplay also gets you more invested in it, and yeah, it, and it, it totally. really gives more to the immersion of your play. And it's a lot of fun to to see when someone. Uh, who may never have painted a miniature does a really good job on their first one, yep. and they come to the table and they're all like, all swell up. And like, oh, <laughs> check out my miniature! I painted it's the first yep. one I ever did, and it looks great. And you can see it in them that they're ready 
to enjoy that experience yeah because they took the time and they realized it's not a hard thing to do yep all you got to do is get some paints get a brush or two and go to it and make it happen yep and have fun that's the biggest thing we just want you guys to have fun you it's know. about um a lot of it too is about having that confidence to just sort of step in and do that yeah uh, but yeah the, the great thing is that it's the end of the day nobody's sort of living and dying based on how you paint your minis <laughs> exactly yeah it's, it's not one of those things where you're going to be like well i had to dodge 15 bullets to make this happen exactly but, you yeah know. um josh over at mini painting studio says you can also use the army painter quick shade wash mixing medium to your washes to dilute the washes without making it thin Leading yep. to pooling, so there. I don't. I know that there's some in here. I don't know where it's. At. Oh yeah, here it is. Nope, not like the war paints <laughs> mixing medium right off the bat. Uh, you yep. can get this, add it to your to any of your paints actually to thin them down, um, and make them look good. So here yep. we go. I haven't actually used this before, so thanks for this, Josh. <laughs> yeah. Um, Carl says I spent Mixed. all night working on two Doctor Who minis, the tenth and fourth Doctors. Oh, cool! Nice. Well, this is my favorite. Is he really? Tom Baker. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Working on Black Legion uh, obliterators for a commission and my Inquisitamunda, Inquisitamunda warband. Okay, that's coming from Drew. Drew, cool. I saw his uh, the first model that he did for that warband. It looks fantastic. Uh, Matt King says that he's painting the same Dragon Board mini with the intense cloak for my home game. I love that mini. It is right. a beautiful is mini. Cool. Yep. <laughs> uh, and that's that's what, another thing about the, the, the WizKids minis is when you get a two-pack, like this right here is the Tiefling packaging right here. Um, you can see on the back and everything. If you want to find out more, check out WizKids.com slash unpainted. But when you, or, when you purchase it, you're going to get two minis, two Tieflings, two Dragonborns, two humans, two elves, whatever, and whatever class they may be representing. And it's supposed to be a low level version so like this right. one here would be the low level one to maybe like one to seven okay level right, yeah. character and then when he once you meet, meet that seven or eighth level and higher yeah. then the other miniature is supposed to represent the same character uh, at a higher yeah. level with right, yeah. you know like with more yep. powers and and everything and more bling and more, and more bling yeah right. okay so that's another really cool thing about it is when you get the two pack of character miniatures you you know you're going to paint the, the the lower level one that's when you'll use and then pull out that big the big gun once you once you've leveled up. So cool. it, it's just it's such a cool cool concept. Whiskey's really hit one out of the park with this. Um, Drew also says I have a huge undead army commission coming in from Ireland this week. Nice. Oh, cool. Oops. Uh, Mini painting studios also says finished Imperial Assault, finishing two scythe commissions tonight and finishing Gloomhaven tomorrow. Okay. That's a lot of that's a lot of stuff. Stuff being, a lot of stuff being finished up. Which uh, is good. Carl and, says I could never do commissions for money. The stress would kill me or kill <laughs> the fun. Um, Ryan, hey Ryan, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Working on the adult red dragon D and D mini from Kanji, Kanjira, the World Breaker by Reaper. Nice. Cool. Uh, Ryan, if you uh, are not a part of the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group, please join us in there, uh, join the community. We would love to see the progress and the finished work on that red dragon. Uh, yeah, definitely. It's such a cool, cool miniature. Um, Michael Patrick O'Connor says, I have a mini that I need to keep clear. It, it is a clear mini. It will be for a cleric with the invisible spell. Remember summoning and heals don't break invisibility. That's right, it's very cool. That's the wrong stuff. You want the quick shade, not the war paint. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you know, whatever. Nope. <laughs> oh, we've got we got the shades. The quick shade. Yep. Oh, so let's put them under there. Yep. Quick shade. And where's the other one? There's wall paint. And are you talking about the uh, the dilution? Oh, stuff. for this. Maybe right. maybe that wasn't the proper dilution. Where's the wall paints. Uh, wall paints bottle. mixing medium. The, that's a mixing medium. Ah, it's. I don't. I, it's probably in this mess of stuff. So many. Yeah, paints. there's a lot of stuff. But if you have one of, that you can take a picture of and post, that'd be great. Matt, I wish I could share oh, the pic I have 
of it and get some advice critique it needs some touch-ups and the base done but i love it i'm sure it looks okay. amazing matt there it is there's is this the one we're looking for the quick there, shade wash there. mixing medium yep okay cool. are those villager models davis painting yes uh they are the villager children yep. models from whiz kids well, hey so and uh this is, says, this is the level zero right and this, yeah, those one, are, this is after she's leveled up yeah after she's leveled grown up a okay. little bit right. yeah sure Yep. <laughs> um, uh, Ryan, I would love to share with you guys. Absolutely. Uh, and there's a lot. Uh, Josh from uh, uh, and Drew are both in there. Uh, Drew is One Inch Heroes, and Josh is uh, Mini Painting Studios. They're part of the group. They give great advice. Dave's in the group is very active in there uh, as far as giving advice. And and uh, we and we all just you know if there's something in there because I like to talk. And we love. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> it's so true. About um, toy soldiers. About painting. Um, love to talk about painting. Steve, what's up, buddy? Working on old school Raul Partha and some dark sword minis. Nice. Oh, cool. We found it, Josh. <laughs> yep. Uh, thanks. Uh, what's the name of that group? Uh, Matt, it is Painting Happy L I apostrophe L minis. Um, but if you just put in Painting Happy, it'll probably just pop up under, under uh, search. Yep. Um, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, Dale says, hey, welcome, Dale. It's a pleasure having you. Could you recommend a starter a starter paint set that has some washes in it for people who are starting to paint minis? Ooh. Army um, Painters War Paints has a yep. hobby set, which is pretty basic. It has a bunch of brushes. It has a little green grid pad thing that you can yep. paint over. And it has, um, your, has your the basic colors, like black, white, um, silver, uh, red, yellow, green, mm -hmm. blue. Which are all part um, of what? Uh, the color the wheel. Color wheel. <laughs> oh, it's still in there. Is it really? It's still in my box of paints. <laughs> but yes, uh, um, all of the different uh, paint companies that uh, you can that make paints for miniature painting have a starter set. Um, and one of the big things is don't necessarily lock yourself into one paint, unless yep. of course they're going to sponsor your events. Uh, <laughs> then you, you might want to make pay attention to the their product line. But because um, in you'll see inside here, I've got some uh, game colors. I've got some Army Painter War Paints. Yep. Uh, we've got some Citadel. We've got yeah, some, some Vallejo. Vallejo model colors. Model colors. So there's a lot Hands of them out races. there. Well, Find the one that you enjoy and that you uh, that you like using yep. based on the pigments and the and the and the application uh, uh, and stuff. But don't you don't need to lock yourself into one particular one. But Army Painters does have a really good starter set. It'll have all the tools you need, like if you're taking miniatures off of the sprue, you can, it has the, you know, the clipper tools, the, yep. the, a bunch of, a bunch of cool stuff in there. Vallejo has a, has a starter set. Um, Citadel has a starter set. Yep. Uh, so, and, and as you get more advanced, they have more advanced sets. They also have, um, uh, like Army Painter has one that's literally just paints you would use from uh, painting faces. Right. Yep. So it, it's ridiculous out what's out there. There's a lot of good stuff. Um, and, yeah, just find out which one your local hobby store has. So go to your local game store, see what they have as far as starter sets available. Because yep. if they have a starter set, they tend to have the rest of that paint line. They do. They so. do. And I always advise that so that it's, uh, it's easy for you to uh, replenish the paints. Absolutely. You, there's no way you're going to go through the paint colors at the same rate. Right. At all. You can always tell when there's a like an order of uh, Vallejo paints have come into uh, Titan because mm -hmm. the black is full, right? And then it, like two days later, no black, no black. Everybody's taking the black. Same with the white, black and white, two most popular colors. People use them all the time for everything. Um, mixing into other colors is the big reason right. for that, um, or undercoating, priming, that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, it's always nice when you get a fresh shipment of paints in. It is. And uh, on Tuesday, we mentioned that we're going to probably be announcing something for February. Oh, yeah. uh, just so you guys know, it will involve a contest. Uh, it will be, it'll run the entire month. And it will involve what we paint that month. Oh, dear. So whatever we paint will be given to somebody. <laughs> I can't say what that is yet. Got to get it in hand. We yep. have reached out to some companies, so... Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, we. I mean, we've got some feedback already, uh, so we're gonna get some pretty cool stuff. And so, what um, what we'll be painting, we'll be painting for for you guys, yep. watch, that are that are constantly watching us, and uh, it's gonna be interesting. You guys are gonna enjoy it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I think so. 
think so. <clears throat> I think one of the things that we're we're kind of excited to mess around with as well over the the coming year is uh, doing a little bit of uh, terrain. Too. Oh yeah. So maybe doing some uh, terrain building uh, and some terrain painting because uh, painting terrain is very very different to well maybe not very different but quite different to painting miniatures. Like techniques that you use more often. Um, mm -hmm. So we have Oliver Ziller in there. Oliver, welcome. Thanks for joining us. He's in Norway. Love oh, wow. Norway. Went to Oslo a couple times. I loved it. Oh, up there. cool. Excellent. Yeah. I have not been to Scandinavia yet. Oh, I. Anyway, I'm in Norway, Sweden. Yeah, cool. Sweden. I've like sixteen times. All right. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, get a hold of miniature. Uh, so it's really hard to get hold of miniatures in most of the U.S. and Canada. The prices are sky high, or prices are sky high for sending. They are, I agree. Uh, so I travel a lot to London. I love painting and would do more D&D, uh, &D, do it more, D&D &D here. Absolutely, man. D&D uh, &D is, is like the big one. Everybody loves it. <laughs> Oliver, thank you for joining us again. Jason, what's up? Hey, hope you're doing well. Jason uh, Azevedo, is that how you say your name? Um, if I butchered it, I apologize, but welcome. Um, Josh says the quick wash mixing medium can also be applied to miniatures that have frosted from too much varnish and it makes it disappear. Cool. Not that I know from personal mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever knows that from personal experience. That's a good one. Dale Reaper Paints has an excellent starter set. It comes with paint, brushes, and a few minis. That's true. Reaper mm -hmm. Paints does have a, a really good starter set. They have a really good master series as well. Um, uh, so check them out. They have great yep. product. Uh, Michael says, or is, or is it the the only paint you, you're? Oh, is it the only paint that your FLGS has? Uh, sometimes uh, an FLGS will also stick to one paint set, yep. um, especially if they're a relatively small FLGS. Most most of them have uh, three to four product lines that you can pick up uh, or, or choose from. Yep. Especially if they if they carry uh, Citadel and Warhammer, they'll have the Citadel stuff. Um, they have there's P3 uh, yep. out there by Private Press. Private Press. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, Reaper has their paints. Uh, Army Painter War Paints and Vallejo are are like I would say the top five. Yeah. What do we got? Vallejo, uh, Vallejo Army Citadel, Painter, Citadel, Army, uh, P3, yep. and Reaper. Reaper. Yep, they're probably so. the top five. There are also, there's uh, and Andrea, I think. Okay. Uh, Scale 75. Okay. Uh, War Colors. Um, probably there's, a few others. Yeah, there's, yep. there's, 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 a, there's quite a few out there, but those would be the top Apple five. Apple Barrel Craft Paints. Apple Barrel Craft Paints, right? Straight <laughs> at Walmart, 50 cents a bottle. That's for you, Jeff. Uh, and if you want to try that, and I, I'm not discouraging anybody from trying it. Yeah. Uh, if you need to paint on a budget, it's <laughs> worth it. To paint on a budget, and it's also a great way to start. If you if you don't want to spend, because these aren't cheap. Mm. Nah, I mean this is like one of these is what two dollars and forty nine cents ish. Uh, let's say they're five dollars each. Wow, it's let, let, let's say let's just say that they were five dollars each. Flip that over, and I'm done. <coughs> how how long? Apple barrel, here I come. How long does it take you to go through that pot of paint? Oh yeah, a while. Yeah. yeah, and I'm a heavy. I I, I unload a lot when yeah. I do it. I'm a heavy-handed person when it comes to dropping my paint dollops. Yeah. So, so have you worked out sort of how much your entertainment is worth? <clears throat> sure. You can get a lot of entertainment from these. You can. You really can. Yep. Um, two of these. Let's say two of these is a movie ticket. You'll still be using these long after. That's true. The That's memory true. of that movie has faded. Especially with me. <laughs> the Alzheimer's is kicking in. Yeah, I know. You know <laughs> Your memory is terrible. Us. That's the worst. Um, <clears throat> uh, hey, Ryan, okay. Uh, can you work it a good to the uh, brushes? Oh, man, Matt, brushes. Now, there's another one. Yeah. Uh, again, there are hobby brushes that you can pick up by the different companies. Yep. Every company has them. There's also a company called Games and Gears. has some really nice brushes. I use those at home now. Um, uh, just and I'll bring I'll bring them back in so you, I can show them to you guys. They're really nice. There's some. They're very. There's a. I just love them. They're heavy. Yep. They they fit well in my hand. 
Uh, Army Painter has some really good brushes. I think I have a few in here, like here's one. And one of the things I like about them is they, they have a triangular instead of a rounded, so it doesn't yep. roll in your hand when you're painting with them. Uh, it just It's locked in and you uh, affords some very steady you feel like remote control. Yeah, right. uh, it, which is really nice. But you can just go to Michael's or, again, Walmart or any place and go in and, and buy some brushes there if you're just starting. Uh, buy a, a little variety pack, use them. Uh, they're not going to be the best. They're not, they're going to, the, the hairs aren't going to be uh, as easily controlled um, no. and stuff on, on the bristles and the brush and stuff itself. So uh, I would recommend don't use them for very long. Spend the dollar ninety nine or two bucks on some cheap brushes. Give it a give it a go. Yep. But when you're ready to step it up, there are a lot of really nice brushes out there that you can get. And then of course there's the whole thing of brush care and maintenance that you need to take into consideration um, with your paintbrushes. You know, it's not just put in the water, wipe it off, and it's good to go. There's soaps that you can use, um, and then you know there's just a lot of things that you need to do to maintain your brushes. Yeah. <clears throat> Michael, I am sure if I enter, I will lose. I never win, but I probably, I, but I probably will enter. You should enter. Everybody should enter when when we uh, announce it. Yep. And that'll happen. What's also really cool about that is, starting in February, it'll be every month. Whatever we're painting that month is going to be a prize giveaway at the end. Uh, all my hard work. All my hard work. You're just giving it away. Just giving it away. You have some of this. You have yeah, some of this. Yeah, like, or like Oprah. You are, you are the Oprah of miniature painting. Yeah, it's going to be great. And it's going to be awesome to be able to provide that to you guys yeah. that are dedicated to watching us. Um, it, it's, and, you know, it'll also encourage you to share it because that's going to be one of the ways to enter to win. Right. <laughs> is share, share the go. contest. So um, start your practicing now. Yeah. Share the show. There's going to be some really good stuff uh, coming yeah. up. I mean, I, I'll give a couple hints. Um, stuffed fables it will be painted mm -hmm. uh, that's not a hint that's like that's a hint that's a direct I can't tell you which mind. month oh, you but I, okay. I can tell you that it will be one of the prizes that sure. we will be painting The Legend of Korra by IDW Games uh, which is like their pro arena pro battle arena pro bending yep. yeah pro bending game um, we'll, Star Wars oh. Legion <laughs> Star I was Wars wondering Legion. if you were going to say it. Yeah, I, I, yep. ta I talked to them yesterday, and they're, they're about awesome. it. So we'll be getting some of that. That will be a giveaway. Uh, and then as the year progresses and then new games drop, I'm, I'm pretty sure Rising Sun will be in there. Uh, I, Song of Ice and Fire by uh, uh, Simon. Simon. Cool. Um, and yep. uh, like I said, as other things are dropping over the year, we'll get something in here, we'll paint it, and it'll be a prize that we'll be able to give away. That'll be super cool. And it'll be, yep. I mean, painted by, by Dave. That, yeah. That's the big thing. Hendrick. My miniatures are not going to look as good as his. I'm hoping to get there in about seven years. Primed by Rick. How about you? Matt? I'll take it. You can prime them. I primed those miniatures, <laughs> and I put, some, I put some love on some of them. Uh, but you're going to get those, uh, or have, a, have an opportunity to win those, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So that will be cool. That is, a, that is like the big announcement. Yep. That we, but next week, we'll know exactly what the February prize will be. <laughs> yep. And that'll be the big announcement. The that next big announcement. Yes. The biggest announcement since this one. Since this one. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're like the worst. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now that we've had that. Oh, you want to say thing. one more thing? Yeah. When you mentioned terrain. Yep. So if we're doing something for that month, if we do a piece, a terrain piece yep. that is similar or. or uh, Complements the miniatures we're painting. Yep, that'll also be added in. Yeah, to what they get. I guess I have no say in this. You've got. I'm to asking you. <laughs> I'm asking you because sure. you're the one that really is going to be I teaching think, us. I think we can totally do that. Yeah, because I have never built terrain before. Just so you guys know, and I'm sure. really, I, I truly am excited to be able to, to learn how to do it. Sure. Because I go, to, I go to Titan. They have these little flea markets. Yep. Someone always shows up with some styrofoam like rock formations that, yep. and I buy them. Right. I so buy them every time. Yeah. I don't have to build it, but I want to build it. Sure. So I want to learn how to do it. Okay. Um, so that's for me. That's going to be a very exciting aspect. Yep. To what we're going to do. and airbrushing. We're going to actually we're actually going to do some airbrush. We'll play around with a little yeah. bit of that. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm still a complete novice with airbrushing okay. as well myself. So. And we um, may not do that live. We may have to do that off camera. Yeah. With some video like, like pre-record stuff. Pre-record it because yeah. it is loud. 
yep. the, the compressors, and we can still we can cut it in. Yep. You know, if we do it in advance. That'd so, be good. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. That's. Uh, I was wondering how we were going to try that. Okay, because I know that it, that compressor is just loud and would probably drown out everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. Could be. Um, cool. Okay. Can I get back to the yellow now? Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Radio. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, what I've done now, I've gone back and I've uh, highlighted again with the yellow. I thinned down some of the sun yellow. Let me get the. What's going on? Hmm? Up here. There we go. <laughs> His camera is very orange. Um, so I never know which way to turn it. Uh, so I thinned down some more of the some of the, the sun yellow. Use that to highlight back over the uh, shade that we used, and then uh, I've mixed in some Vallejo ivory into the sun yellow, um, just a little bit in to um, start to get those sort of lighter highlights at the top. So uh, just get a little bit more of that out. So I think that, that kind of covers the slightly different, uh, using slightly different colors or colors from uh, Vallejo rather than uh, from GW, but uh, Brad, that's a very a very similar approach to what um, the the paint app was suggesting. Um, we haven't used any additional colors. We've just used four. Four. Yeah. Uh, or we haven't used an additional number of colors, but they're just those few extra steps in between that can give you that sort of smoothness uh, in appearance. And it looks good. I mean, on camera, this still looks a little bit rough, but. Um, what I'd probably do with something like this is because the, the cloak is tattered along the bottom here, mm -hmm. uh, is I'd probably get something like uh, charred brown. And I'll try, let me take my hand away. That's it gonna. But uh, just gotta dig in my paint box here for a second. Oh. I'm just gonna get a little bit of that. You can see how dark that is um, there. I'm just going to get one of my um, older brushes and bring it up. Where are we? There we go. It just needed to catch up. Um, so I'm going to take some of that. Um, I take a little bit of yellow, thin that a little bit. Not, it, uh, not thin it, but just lighten it. And then I can just dab that. Nice. Sort of give a mud muddy kind of look along the bottom there. Ryan says, I'm just starting to DM a new campaign. I'm brand new to the whole scene. Painting minis is a little intimidating to me. You guys have any recommendations for minis that I could get to just kind of get started? These are it right here, man. The uh, And if you don't want to paint them, they have pre-painted miniatures from WizKids for D&D &D and Pathfinder. Uh, which can be used in D&D, of course. And then the unpainted pre-primed miniatures by WizKids, uh, their Nolzer's Marvelous Miniature line and their deep cuts for Pathfinder are amazing. Um, and if you want to start painting those, they're very inexpensive. Like I said, they're four ninety nine per pack of two. or And even their big monster ones, like the Beholder, is four ninety nine. Right. Ridiculous. Yep. Uh, so you can. these are a perfect opportunity to do some really good... Uh, miniature painting uh, on on a budget or as a beginner, you don't want to get too invested in it. Yeah, yeah. The uh, is it, uh, Reaper as well, Reaper Bones Master mm -hmm. Series. Uh, no, sorry, not Master Series, but the Reaper Bones series mm -hmm. are um, also sort of great for that. Absolutely. Um, your local store might have uh, some of those too, mm -hmm. but uh, again, they're not a not a huge investment. Uh, Correct. Financially, but you can spend a lot of time painting them, um, practicing on them. If you get some of the larger models, you can use them as a practice model. So if you want to practice your painting yellow, you don't have to get start a new miniature. Right. You can just paint on this section of the tail of this crazy beast or whatever right. it is. Um, or you can just paint the cloak. And next time I want to practice red, I can come around and do the scales of his armor or yeah. do his skin or do the 
I want to practice um, my brass and my bronze, I can practice that on the shield. Um, yes. So having a few miniatures sitting at the side of your um, sort of painting area, if you can set yourself up a painting area, um, is really handy. It Absolutely. gives you a... Absolutely. So just to test things out on. So I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Yeah, that, that looks great. That Let's design. put them up here to take the rats off. No. Dang you, rats. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need to spin it, I guess. But Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> yeah. Do I want to put it on the spinner? Let me see if I can. I'm sorry, guys. Let me let me put it up here and so the spinner's on. Oh, this one. Gonna put it on. Oh. Okay. <laughs> no. Here I am, just breaking everything. Mini down, mini down. Thanks. <laughs> sorry about that, gentlemen and ladies. <laughs> Uh, craft paints are fine for terrain and getting weird colors. Uh, they're okay for figs, but you'll have to work much harder to get good results. Agreed. Absolutely. Ryan, don't be intimidated. You never know how good you can be until you try. Absolutely. As with everything, practice. Wally World. Got some love on Wally World. Here's an idea for con for a contest. The winner, you can, can send in a complete model for you guys to paint on air or invite the winner to do a painting session with you guys live on the show. Yeah. That could work. Yeah, that could work as well. So right. nobody sends in like a dragon. <laughs> right. <laughs> no dragons. You haven't painted by the end of the episode anyway. <laughs> yeah, not for me to paint. I can't paint a dragon <laughs> by the end of an episode. But yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah. That could be a good one. I'm not trying something really tough here. Uh oh. Really, really tough. These minis are so tiny. The children. Okay. Yes. That are trying to paint their eyes. Take uh, that. All right. What brush are you gonna gonna use? I'm using a Broken Toad Miniature Series Two Kalinsky Sable. Okay. Which uh, has what? Two size, hairs? No, it's size one. Okay. So. The smallest they make is uh, size triple zero. Okay. Um, so they have size triple zero, zero, and actually, yeah. I turn around, you can see the bright, glowing white eyes there. Check that out. <laughs> it just looks super creepy. It does, doesn't it? Maybe it's I should just leave them like, like that. Children of the corn kind of look to it. Yeah. So what? I'm, as you can see on the, particularly on this one, the. Oh, you can just go back to there. On her, uh, the eye on this side is not only is it large, but it's also gone down onto the cheek. So what I'm going to do is paint the pupil in there first, and then come back and touch it up, touch up the to paint the flesh back in. Put, more, put the corrections in. Put the corrections. Do the corrections. Exactly. Nice. So. So I. I'm still working on these dang tieflings. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just painted a cloak. That's it. <laughs> yeah. But these are the tieflings I started on Tuesday. So, there's that. They're coming along well. Yeah. So, as a reminder, for you guys, if you haven't already joined the Painting Happy Little Minis group, uh, please do so. Because one of the fun things is right after we're done at 3 o'clock, I believe um, Josh will be live Yep. with mi uh, Mini Painting Studios. With stream. And he tends to uh, broadcast it right there in the group as well. So you can watch him paint, and that is an absolute joy. Uh, he's got some mad skills. So you see he's got a lot of things going on as well. So. Yeah, some really cool miniatures he's painting. You can see a lot of uh, a good variety of stuff. Absolutely. In the next couple of days. And then, uh, yeah, so become part of that community. And speaking of community, that's one of the big things you can find at your local game store. Go there. Uh, the community you can uh, find there is going to have gamers that are all about the same kind of stuff you are. Uh, they usually, if they have a painting station set up at the store, they're going to meet some other painters. Um, you can you can become a uh, 
a part of that, you know, yep. learn from them. Uh, almost every store that has a paint station has the painter, the store painter that you go, yeah. the, you know, you go, they're always sitting there. Titan, uh, I want to say it's Justin, right. is always okay. at the table painting. Yep. Uh, and there are some others. Uh, but if they have it, you know, ask them questions, you know, show them what you want to paint and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll absolutely help out. Yep. So it's, it's a good place to have an experience, a positive experience, hopefully. One of the cool things about people who enjoy seeing really cool painted miniatures mm -hmm. is they always want to see more cool painted miniatures. Yes, they do. And the best way to do that is to teach more people how to paint. So eventually, what? you'll have... If everybody's painting, everybody's making cool looking miniatures. I so love it. It is amazing. <laughs> I think it's why we're doing what we're doing because we want everybody to pretty much experience the joys of painting. Yeah, you know, definitely. There's a lot of joy to be had with it. There he is. Great. Cool. What you looking for? I don't know. I was just looking at your uh, tiefling. I think. Um, yeah, that's going nicely. Sorry about that. <laughs> what, are you, what are you messing with now? Yeah. Um, so I, I was putting crystal blue on because I'm I, like I'm making this all, all of his costume have different blues, different blues yeah. around there. And uh, after I let it dry, I got I to touch up his face a little bit. But the next thing I'm going to work on, like right now, is I'm actually going to work on this clear energy, right? Which looks yep. like it's like flying daggers of energy. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I want I want to have it be kind of a red. Okay. Um, I so I, I have, the, I have the, so red, red, red wash? the red tone. Okay. Yep. So that. Where's the. Mix that with a little bit of this. Okay. Okay. All right. So we will dollop. So yeah, try some of that first. And once you've, uh, once that dries, Try some without this or with it? Uh, no, we, we, yeah, mix that in with it. But once that dries, um, probably use that as well. Mm -hmm. The mixing, wash mixing medium with some uh, orange. Orange? Yeah. Okay. Because I, th I think that's the idea of this is they've got a huge range of colors mm -hmm. in the wall paints range. Taking the, the mixing medium and mixing a paint in creates a wash. A new wash. Yeah. Nice. Rather than just thinning the paint, which mm -hmm. breaks up the co sort of the cohesion and okay. reduces the pigment count and all that sort of thing. So let's see how it looks. Yep. I think it's going to look pretty cool. I actually want a bigger brush <laughs> for that. I'm just okay. going to reach over here in front of you and grab one of these guys. Sure. Because I feel kind of silly here, sitting here not painting. <laughs> All right, so I'm using the red tone with some of the mixing medium on here. And this is over the clear acrylic aspect of the miniature. Yep. And. Oh, nice. What do you think? Yeah. Like it? I think with an orange as well after that dries, I think yep. it'll look pretty cool. So I'm gonna put that oops sorry up on the Dragonborn. Up on there. What are you doing to my Dragonborn over there? He's been drinking. drinking? As they will <laughs> tend to do once they get into that tavern. Okay. Oh, Minnie says no stream today sadly unless people want to watch me airbrush varnish on stuff. Uh Sure. Why not? <laughs> I mean, there could be some good stuff to learn in airbrushing, like we said, I I have never airbrushed a miniature before, and uh, you, you know you could talk about some of the uh, hazards and uh, things to look look for or look out for when using airbrush. And if you're varnishing some stuff, yeah. uh, if you're varnishing miniatures or spraying them f for protective stuff, that's got to be have a higher viscous rate, uh, viscosity. Viscosity, so it might clog up your machine. You know, so what are you doing to prevent it from clogging uh, during the airbrush. That's true. Procedure. I'm about to do a bunch of that, so I'd watch mm -hmm. it. Uh, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Right, 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 right. We're just saying. Dave? Yep? I just want to say, like, I don't know if, like, the fact that you put it, uh, eyes on the kids makes them look more or less creepy because the angle I'm looking at right here. Yeah? They look pretty devious. 
<laughs> this I one, think they're supposed to this actually. This great. Um, the I mean the detail. I, I kind of butchered the detail on that face when you blow it up to like a super huge size. Look at the size of that face compared to my my thumbnail yeah. or fingernail. It's crazy. Um, the uh, down in the you know sometimes when you you bite into an apple and you're chewing up the apple you get a little piece in your um, so you put on lip. Yeah. I think just under her lip there. Where is it? It looks like she's got a little little piece tucked away in there. Yeah. And it's like that miniature is tiny. How is that sculpted? One they of the things look I, like they're about ready to jump someone. Yeah, you ever yeah. You, have you ever watched the movie The Order? <laughs> Uh, with um, Heath Ledger, where he's a uh, one of the a priest right. that you know yep. basically expels demons from people, right? And um, these children look like the two little children in the graveyard okay. that were like possessed little <laughs> demon children. So, hey, what's up, James? James is there. I, we see you. Hey, James. Yeah. I don't know, but when I'm when I'm looking at them from sort of table length when they don't look so big I think they're a little bit better yeah they're tiny they are yeah. so tiny you did a great job don't zoom in so far <laughs> yep but uh, yeah so uh, Josh if you're not uh, not streaming today will you be streaming tomorrow yeah, hopefully. We'll see. It takes a second for him to catch that. <laughs> uh, well, Drew at one inch says, Agreed, everyone should try painting minis. My first attempts were nothing to be proud of, but I kept at it, and now I love painting minis. Yep. Yeah. Now people pay you to paint their minis. Yeah, that's right. He's He is phenomenal. Yep. Very good. Your tiefling's looking really good though there. Thank you. Yep. Looking cool. This one. Now that little swash coming out of his hand, is that supposed to be like energy or like or is that like an action throw or what's he doing there? It looks like he's like he cast like uh um like daggers, flying daggers or magic missile. A form of magic missile of some sort. Um, yep. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. This one actually has a like a scepter that has a dragon at the base here. Yep. And it kind of has scales and the spine horns of the dragon going down his back. So, this one's really an interesting, you know advanced version or you know higher level version of that that tiefling yep. sorcerer leveled up he did level up he's got himself a freaking sick yeah. <laughs> sick scepter <laughs> i'm like sitting here going god i'm gonna have to get one of those for my characters yeah. you know and did he get some gold armor or is... yeah, he's got some gold armor is on now too is he able to wear armor yeah, so she can wear wear a form of armor, yeah. uh, a mage armor of some sort. Am I just showing my age? Yeah. How long it has been since I yeah I played back, D &D. back in the day, wizards couldn't yep. couldn't wear armor. It would prevent them from being able to cast their spells. Yep. Robes. That was pretty much it. Yeah. Robes and magical items like rings of. Oh yeah. Rings of um, protection. Ring of protection, yeah. Amulets of protection, all that stuff. All right. All right. I'm going to swap out this guy, too, so you guys can get a peek on him. Cool. Take him out the way. Put this one up there. What? <laughs> I just, as I was bringing the brush across, I brought yeah. it across like, too high. And I got a nice streak of brown across the camera now <laughs> nice not on the lens i don't think but ryan asked what are our thoughts on wet palettes they're pretty cool um yeah they, i think wet palettes have a purpose uh something like um like this where you're working on uh, a variety of different miniatures 
um, they may not be as um, what's the word I'm looking for as useful. Right. Uh, but if you're working on a, a sort of a single miniature or a, a small number of min similar miniatures, mm -hmm. or using the similar sort of color palette, right? Um, that'd be quite useful for keeping mixed colors um, sort of alive a little bit longer. Okay. Obviously, you can see on the the uh, cardboard palette that we use here, uh, all of these, almost all of these paints, or the mixing sort of areas have dried. So um, yeah. even if I wanted to go back, I've got to mix that color again. Yeah. But if I've got the wet palette, it would keep that um, wetter for longer. Uh, again, which so. is very beneficial when doing a lot of miniatures, yeah. Yeah. Um, pardon me. Uh, what, I, what I find typically with working on a lot of miniatures, like 10, 12, 20 mm -hmm. miniatures at a time, is not having to mix colors. Okay. It's very good. So if you can work out a color scheme where your reds, you know that you're going to have like three or four different reds in progression mm -hmm. to start with the base and highlight up, um, that sort of thing. But uh, working across a lot of miniatures with the same color scheme, any mixing you have to do, yeah, uh, you've got, uh, yeah, oh, sorry, three okay. o'clock already. What? Is it? Yep. Yeah, uh, I didn't want to end. I'll just finish this statement then. Yes. Then go. Uh, is, um, oh, now I've forgotten where I was. No, uh, yeah, if, you, if you've got a mix, uh, mm -hmm. each time you come back to paint them, your mix is never going to be the same sort of a second time, right. or third time, or fourth time. So in that case, maybe mixing a pot of paint that'll then be able to be used across the whole army oh, you're working okay. on is the way to go. So where I mixed the the sun yellow and the ivory, right? Get an old paint pot, clean it out, mix it in there, mix it in there, shake it up, and then I put, that's my mixed paint. Okay, I can use that in between. Nice. So that's if you're working on a dozen miniatures or more at a time. Okay. Um, when you're working on two or three models, it's not such a sort of a huge problem. Right. But um, yeah, when you're working on more. There you have that's it. what I'd recommend. There you have it. That's our show today, everybody. We appreciate everybody that joined us, all the newcomers that uh, joined us in the chat. Yep. Again, welcome. Join us over at Painting Happy Little Minis, our Facebook group, uh, where you can join our community of fellow painters and, and hobbyists, and you can ask questions, post pictures, and have just have a good time in that yep. community. But the biggest community to join is your local game stores. Go go check them out. Uh, you can pick up all the product we had we used today from the paints and the yep. miniatures at your local game store. If they do not have it, you can always ask them. Hey, could you order that? I saw it. I uh, would like to get my hands on some of those army painters or some of the Citadel or some of the Vallejo paints. Uh, yep. And I absolutely the miniatures uh, are available out there. Yep. So uh, we will be back next Tuesday uh, okay. for another episode of Painting Happy Little Minis. And until then. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'm Rick. I'm Dave. And we will see you at the game store. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.